What's up, guys? Chris with UVT back with another installation to our Realtek series of videos. If this is your first time, first time catching a Realtek, I do this in like a live video format. There won't be any editing. There won't be any transitions or anything like that. These videos are designed to be relatively short, somewhat detailed, but these are designed to give you real world feedback on things that we see, things coming up, updates, issues that we find, etc. So today's video is going to be dedicated to the monster V3 update to the Matrice 300 RTK uh, V3. Obviously, as you can see right here, bingo, bango. This update is huge. It's the largest update that's hit the entire M300 series since initial launch. This thing touches the aircraft. It touches the remote controller, the pilot app, the H20, H20T, P1, L1 everything the entire ecosystem gets hit with this gets hit with this except the battery so let me first and foremost move my face out of your face you're welcome uh, i'm gonna go back to this really quick so again just real quick we are talking about the version three so you'll notice here 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 there not there and here version three so look at that look how beautiful that trackpad drawing is um so no update to the battery but an update to everything else. So um, one note is in order to get full functionality, you will need to update the pilot app to version 3.0.1.4. I would recommend doing that first and foremost because that unlocks a new feature that I'm super excited about that I'll get into here in just a second. So you will need to do that. Um, this screen is overwhelming. There's a lot of versions in here. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the numbers. I do highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep a copy. Either the full release notes, if you want, can't hurt anything, uh, but definitely keep a copy of just this screen right here. Just this little section with your version numbers. Keep that in a phone and an iPad, print it out, whatever you need to do. Keep it with you at all times. That way you can reference this if you have to get support in the field or wherever you are. We are gonna jump right in. So I'm gonna try to get this all on one screen. Boom, perfect. Uh, my face is in the way. Let me see if I can, let me shrink, there we go. Nobody needs to see too much of me anyway. This is exciting. Offline updates are here on the 300. This is awesome. Basically this alleviates the need to do over the air updates, which would obviously require uh, an internet connection. So offline updates, you will go to DGI.com. You will download a bin file. Sometimes comes down as a zip file. That bin file then is its own standalone executable. It will run its own operation locally. No need for internet. You'll put that bin file on an SD card or a USB stick. They put UDisk here. I hope they were going for USB drive because that's how we were doing it and it was working. You'll essentially put that on an SD card or a USB drive. Put that in your smart controller. Smart controller then uh, unzips, extracts that zip file, extracts that bin, runs that operation locally. You don't need internet and it updates whatever that peripheral is that you downloaded it for. This is huge for organizations that run on large corporate networks, government agencies that have incredible security requirements. I managed IT in the cybersecurity world for an FDIC regulated bank. Boy, howdy, did we have a lot of vetting to do when a new application needed to be run. That could be the DJI Assistant 2 app, which everybody is probably used to that owns the 300 by now, or it could be Adobe Creative Cloud. Didn't really matter who the developer was. Nobody got a free pass. This alleviates all the challenges with that vetting process. Huge, huge news. Uh, again, this video is not designed to be a full tutorial. If you have any issues at all, Contact us at UVT, www.uvt.us, support at uvt.us, hits our support team, creates a ticket immediately. We all get pinged. You can also call us at 844-595-8010. All that's on the website. Don't need to memorize it. Reach out. Happy to help you with that step right there. Going along that same path, they've added some data and privacy settings in here. Truthfully, I haven't dug into a whole lot of this. This was not uh, in any of the stuff that we tested. But they did add a security code feature, which is kind of neat. So with the security code, which is right here, you can decrypt an encrypted SD card on a Windows machine. You download their little decrypt tool. You can un you can decrypt. You can you can open up those files and access that SD card from Windows machine. Kind of neat. It's something that DJ has never done before. So that alone is rather intriguing, if you ask me. But 
anyway, little note there. Um, again, kind of cool to see. It's, it's really cool to see DJI investing in expanding that local data mode sort of ecosystem, that, that mentality of, Hey, you know what? You don't need the internet to do this kind of stuff. You shouldn't have to have the internet to do this kind of stuff. You bought this equipment. It's expensive equipment. You should be able to access it however you need to in whatever way you need to. And in this case, super valuable for really the bulk of the enterprise users out there. So really cool to see the investment being made here. Um, now we're going to go down to some flight controller settings. The rest of this, yeah, the rest of this document's all going to be relatively um, related to, you know, flight performance, things like that, some HMS stuff. So I'm going to try to go through this relatively quickly, but I'm really bad at that. If you ever watch me do anything, I don't know how to do anything quick. So um, uh, let's see. Point A, flight controller settings improvement. Introduce coordinated turn. So coordinated turn, getting ready to come at you with a pretty scientific illustration, my friends. Currently, the 300 yaws like this. Look at that movement. That is, it's a piece of art, right? So no banking, no rolling, no nothing, just a straight yaw. Introducing coordinated turn will now allow or automatically enable the mixing of yaw and roll to create a banked turn. So now you're going to be yawing like this. You're going to have kind of a smoother, uh, much more natural type turning to it. Kind of a silly thing to be excited about. I'm pretty pumped just to kind of see what that experience is like. If you've flown the DJI FPV drone, it has this capability. Now, the FPV drone can also, you can set the bank or I guess the strength of that bank, the angle, the degree of bank. I don't know if we're going to do that in the 300 or not. We will be testing and uh, we'll let you know if it's anything noteworthy. The second point here, satellite positioning can be switched between Beidou and GPS GLONASS. Those of us in North America, we're going to be in GPS and GLONASS the whole time. So nothing major there. Um, down here, let me scroll. There we go. Right there. Um, you can now increase your height limit to a maximum of 1,500 meters. Um, pretty good for those of you guys that operate in really hilly mountainous terrains. That's awesome. One note is at every power cycle, every time you restart the aircraft, it will reset to 500 meters. So just know that it's not going to uh, be a persistent setting. The default will drop it down to 500 meters. So when you recycle that thing or power cycle it, set that height limit again if you need to. Uh, these next two points are about RTK. I have never personally had the need to do this, but in version three, you select your RTK service type first, and then you can enable and disable RTK positioning during your flight. So kind of cool if you need to do that. Again, I, I've never had the need. I either fly an RTK or I don't. Uh, but again, I don't, me personally, I don't do a lot of mapping or surveying. So um, nice little feature in there. There you go. The HMS, the health management system, one of the cooler advancements in the DJI application world and DJI hardware world um, runs on the pilot app. It's your heads up display for your avionics, your propulsion, your battery, vision system, pretty much ev every critical system is in there. Now they've added DJI care enterprise and maintenance program statuses to that. So that care enterprise is either basic or plus every M300, every H20, every H20T, every P1, every L1 come with that. So now you can track I'm assuming you will attract the individual peripherals in there too. Again, we're going to test this. At the end of this video, by the way, I'm going to kind of give you just a quick, my own personal philosophy on updating. Uh, the gist of it is don't update on day one. Let us test this first. But anyway, uh, we'll see how that's implemented. But really cool. It's awesome to see DJI investing in sort of that, that fleet perspective, getting all of this data in front of the operator to make good informed decisions and fly as safely as possible. It is my personal belief that fleet management and maintenance is, it should already be the most important thing to any operator, but it is quickly becoming a critical component of just about every operation out there. Whether you've got two drones or 200 drones, they have to be maintained properly. And to do that, you need to keep an eye on your critical systems. And DJI seems to be continuing to invest in sort of that cohesive approach and just aggregating that data, putting all that data into an accessible format is awesome. Again, I ramble and digress. Let's move on. The next point here, uh, you can get error records and manage logs as well uh, through there if you need to do any kind of battery diagnosis or anything like that. So two little points there, C and D. DJI AirSense is DJI's ADSB implementation. It's receive only. They have implemented a 
I'm going to call it a new algorithm. I have no idea if that's exactly what it is. It's above my pay grade and people much smarter than me are doing it, but they're essentially implementing changes to prevent as many false alarms. Let's say you're flying at 300 feet above ground level and a 737 comes cruising by at 40,000 feet. Currently, you're going to be told that there's a 737 cruising at 40,000 feet when you're at 300 feet. I think you're going to be okay. I don't personally think you need to see that. Now, should you be able to look at a map and see that? Sure, but you sh- it shouldn't interrupt. It shouldn't ping you during your flight, distracting you when that manned aircraft is at 40,000 feet. My hope, this is just a presumption. I wasn't able to test this, but my presumption is maybe those will be a little bit more optimized. You won't see alerts, alerts, alarms for things that aren't necessarily in your immediate area. That could be kind of cool. Um, They're adding an AR projection display, which I presume is going to emulate the way the home point is right now. When you point your H20, you're panning it around. You'll see that home point kind of come up like a like a little, you know, yellow circle. So you can kind of hone in on that. My assumption is it's going to be similar to that. But we're going to test that and see. That's pretty cool. Again, anything that can be done to increase situational awareness, give the operator as much data as possible without distracting them, overwhelming them. Pulling them away from managing the actual flight is critical. And just knowing the way DJI does things, I assume that's going to be done pretty well. So that is really exciting. The next section here is about optimizations to mission flight. Uh, Most of these I have not personally had to deal with a whole lot. I'm pretty cut and dry when I do my missions. It's usually public safety oriented or it's a pre-built flight for, you know, construction or utilities. So, um, Me personally, I don't know, but or I don't have any experience with it. Um, But you can now decelerate when pulling down on the pitch stick on your remote. Don't have to pause your flight. You can just slow right down. Pretty useful if you just need to change something up. Something is changing in your scene. If you're doing just a 2D map and maybe you want to go a little slower over an area, whatever that might be. But you can now do that in real time during a mission flight. Um, The remote controller also now cannot control the aircraft yaw when the aircraft yaw is set to a long route. Pretty cool. You can now pause the mission flight with the pause button, the physical button on your smart controller or through the app. But to resume it, you can only resume it through the app. That's a change coming or or already here in version three. And then uh, it's good to see the L1 getting some time in the spotlight, man. Anything we can do to optimize that thing is welcomed. So they've added acceleration and deceleration, deceleration, calibration flight for the L1 payload, except in linear flight mission. Acceleration and deceleration, calibration flight for the L1. Uh, yep. So we are pretty much almost done and we're at 13 minutes. That's a long real tech. Sorry about that. So they've done some optimizations to return to home RTH. Um, this first point is talking about when you are in an RTH behavior, the aircraft encounters an obstacle. Now they've made it to where a tip, a tool tip, I'm assuming it's going to be like that heads up display. The little pop-up comes up and it reminds users to exit auto RTH to manually fly home. It reminds users to manually control the aircraft, exit auto RTH, and fly that thing home when encountering obstacles during an RTH behavior. And then you can also exit RTH, auto RTH, by pulling back or in the opposite direction of the direction of travel. So if I'm flying, if if I'm returning home this way, aircraft is returning home this way, I pull back on the stick, it's going to exit that, allow me to assess the scene, everything's stopped, aircraft's good, and then resume it or take it over, whatever you need to do. Um, These next two are pretty cool. This is about the pinpoint during manual flight pinpoints that green diamond symbol that you can drop anywhere you want in the map. Currently pretty limited. You can only edit or delete one of them. You can only really edit and manage one of them. Now you can edit and manage multiple pinpoints. You can even set a pinpoint as a home point. So if during your mission you have that need, you can elect a home point, or I'm sorry, you can elect a pinpoint to serve as your home point. Really good for public safety, active shooter, dynamic scene, super cool stuff. I, so this next point, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I am continually impressed by the M300's range, its video quality. I mean, it's it's just so good, but there's always optimization to be done. And this next point talks about that. So they've optimized frequency selection. This is part of OcuSync Enterprise where it can select between 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz automatically based off of current conditions. So this is now optimizing that frequency selection, just making it better to uh, limit interference even more and increase performance. And then they've also added little tips to come up if you do experience interference. So anything again, anything we can do to get that operator information to 
improve their ability to see, to improve the quality of that flight and getting that data is good. Uh, really, the last point that I'll talk about is the optimization to PSDK and OSDK. PSDK is Payload Software Developer Kit. OSDK is Onboard Software Developer Kit. This would be like for the PSDK. This would be like your GL60 Spotlight. This would be like a GL300, IR10. Any of those uh, Payload SDK payloads that integrate through Skyport are being optimized. If you've ever used a GL60 or any of those, there's definitely some improvement to be done there in that user experience. So... My hope is some of that UX, UI stuff maybe has been cleaned up, uh, optimized, fewer taps to do things, things like that would be great. We will be testing that, of course. And then just obviously some minor bugs that have been fixed. Down here are the notes. Uh, don't look over, I mean, don't, uh, don't sleep on these notes. <laughs> uh, super important stuff. Talks about reverting firmware to certain, to certain versions. Nice bolded thing up here about custom network RTK stuff. You got to update your version, et cetera. Um, one important point, it's at the way bottom, which I'm assuming because you're going to figure it out either way, but you got to get your pilot app on version 3.0.1.4 to do the offline updates. So you want to update to version three of your pilot app and then conduct those offline updates. That is on there. You're good to go. Um, yeah, that's the update. I mean, we're looking at almost two full pages of features here. Huge, huge update. That offline update I'm so excited about. Uh, that's how we've updated our 300 already. And so kind of ending this video, holy smokes, almost 17 minutes. TLDR, thanks for staying. Uh, don't feel like you have to update. It, I know that's probably an unpopular opinion in some circles, but this update is not required. It's not forced. It's not going to lock you out if you don't. You're not going to lose any features if you don't do it. Um understand the changes, read the release notes, watch this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I know I was all over the place. I kind of record these in like a live format. So sorry if it was distracting, just sit down, understand these changes. The last thing that I want anybody to do is update too soon and not be ready for whatever these changes might be, whether that's pop-ups on your screen, changes to where data is displaying, changes to AirSense, for example, for ADSB. If you are a public safety agency and you have processes and procedures, please have SOPs in place. If you don't, let us know. We can help. If you have any of those procedures in place, take a minute, sit down with your team, look at these changes. Does any of this change the way that you operate? Offline updates. Maybe you need to now teach the person that's in charge of managing your fleet how to do that. Maybe they've never done it before. Now they need to know how to do that. All good stuff. ADSB changes. That pop-up comes up and talks about... You know, just changes in that experience. Anything that changes what you're going to see when you fly, please take a minute. Understand that. Don't feel rushed to update this. Please. I mean, I would personally wait until at least early next week. We're going to be doing a ton of testing. The weather's going to be absolute crap here for the next couple of days, maybe even into the weekend. But we're going to be doing a bunch of testing on the bench. And then, of course, flight testing as well. We will be sending out any pertinent information, maybe more videos, Instagram posts, LinkedIn. Follow us everywhere. You'll see it. Uh, other dealers do the same thing. We here, we invest a ton in this type of content, type of testing. Time is so expensive, but it is so valuable to us and to you guys, our customers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your business. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. Uh, we really do appreciate it. The, uh, the pandemic is still here. We're still being impacted by it. But thanks to people like you, loyal customers, we are still here. We are still supporting you. And we are incredibly grateful for your continued trust and loyalty. And hopefully this helps. We're here to help you guys. www.uvt.us, support at uvt.us for email support, or you can call us 844-595-8010. I am Chris. I'm with UVT. We are here when you need us. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you next time.